you come and like try to talk yeah, to people? Yeah, we, we come to tell people about Islam, especially yeah. we want to at least clarify the misconceptions yeah, that is around yeah. Islam. Yeah. Because, as you just mentioned about the media, yeah. is playing an important yeah. role to somehow you know, um, a cloud over Islam and so that people don't actually see the real Lots of unconnected religion. things, like, like things like yesterday. Yeah. You know, people think, oh yeah, like they shot it. Yeah. But uh, it's just strange little things that happen like that. Which people cause the bad because they connect those things, those things. Uh, which is it's interesting, isn't it? This particular individual yeah. is already a convicted criminal. Yes. He has been given somehow some, you know, I don't know what it's called. Like he's he's outside now the prison. Yeah. And being on a de-radicalization program. Yeah. And obviously he hasn't worked. In fact, no. he killed one of the course instructors. Yeah, he went to the course. He? Uh, he killed the course. Yeah. They are on the course, and he killed the course instructor. Yeah. So whatever they're doing, the program doesn't seem to be working. I mean, they need to have a very other. Just like just like if you had of prevent. Yes. How the prevent system is totally, um, it's, 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 it's not evidence-based, secondly, and it's not going to work, and it doesn't work. So if you want to stop people from committing crimes, acts of terrorism, you know, have a proper evidence-based uh, you know, system framework in which people can be dealt with if they're planning to do such atrocities yes. and with the proper hands of the law they're, you know, they're punished pro properly yeah. and also look into the reasons why some people are being radicalized to you know kill innocent people what's their grievance yeah. and they sort of do it, get it all online yeah. I mean are these people are these are these extremists going there killing people because they don't like McDonald's burgers or something? They have some grievance, isn't it? Yeah. Where is the grievance coming from? Is it a foreign policy? Yeah. Is it what they're doing to the Muslim people or everywhere else? You know. So it is not a, just a small piece, it's a and it's, it's it's a big chunk where people are missing from the picture of a jigsaw, yeah. and they're just only isolating. Oh, these people are radicalized because of you know they don't like our way of life. Well, actually, how can you say that? Because those criminals, these extremists, they're actually living your way of life already. They go to pubs, they get to go to nightclubs, you know, they don't do Islamic practice of their religion. They don't practice Islam. So they have already taken a Western lifestyle. So it's not that they don't like your lifestyle, they're actually practicing your own lifestyle themselves. So would you Something say else. They, they, they say they're Muslims, but, they're but of course they're very bad ones. Yeah. Okay, just because you're Muslim doesn't automatically make you immune from doing bad things unless you have a very good ideals of faith and practice based on that faith. You have to make sure that you practice what you preach. If, if Islam says as it does, you know, be just, and these people commit injustices everywhere, yeah. then what is your faith in the first place? So. I think the West and the East, I mean across the globe, people need to say, look, extremism is a problem, whether it's done by religious nutcases or secular nutcases, okay? We have to really say, look, you know, how do we mutually live in this world mutually in, in harmony, in, in, in some kind of understanding of our differences and, and, and having that tolerance? Because if you believe in Christianity, that's your faith. Yeah. Why am I going to say no, 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 no? I have to force you to become something other than what you don't want to be. Exactly. It's your own choice. We can reason with each other yeah. and that's we can say, look, this, uh, the truth is what we think this is it. It's up to you then what you choose. Yeah. Yeah. So personally, I think people at large, they have been deceived by the elites, by the government and so on, of not to understand the real causes of the problems. One of the main reasons why criminals are committing crime, it's not because they're addicted to crime or they like crimes, they're doing it for some reasons that led them to do the crime. When a rapist rapes, why do a rapist rape? Why? There has to be a reason why he's actually taking, you know, he's taking the liberty of people away and forces on someone 
his, his wishes unjustly. We need to understand the reasons, this mentality of these criminals. Likewise, when people go and loot a country or, or, or totally um, subjugate a country and overpower them, they, they go and become the aggressors and overtake those countries, okay? So By force. Reaction, like no, terrorism no. Like a reaction from Every like kind of these kind of wrongs, they need to be looked at. Yeah. Why only take an isolated case of one individual to individuals when bigger crimes are committed? We have to address the bigger issues at the same time and say, is it because people are very much frustrated, they have grievances and they're taking their laws in their own hands but that's not a justification for saying oh what can we do criminals are criminals and they need to be dealt with properly but why are we allowing these criminals to even be generated in our societies to be somehow you know sprout within the society we are feeding some people the governments yeah. our systems of, but a lot of, of them are kind societies of though, like they get this stuff online and, you know but radicalization sides, yeah. radicalization doesn't happen just like they have a dream and god tells them their dream go and do that they are influenced by people yeah they're influenced by what they see so why are they influenced like this yeah, online, like, all, like the dark web type thing, you know, they're on both sides, like so, the Muslim or ISIS thing, but also the white nationalists in America, they, they go crazy, they feel that, because they, maybe they hate themselves, because their life is sad and lonely, and they haven't got... Is it, is it actually, I don't think this is the case, no? they don't think they're sad and lonely, I mean, they have they, good life, some of them are just married and have kids, yeah. who on earth will leave their newly, you know, they just got married, and they have children young yeah. children did, and they go yeah. blow themselves up yeah. come on that's so not a normal do thing that? to do yeah. it must be something really serious that has made them gone crazy wild and unhuman it like dehumanized the, them in a way yeah like the 77 one they had yeah. phds and like they had they seem quite normal no? they, so people need to wake up and say look we need to address the root cause you know in everywhere else we do root cause analysis, RCAs, of any problems that happens. If a plane were to have an accident, we don't say, oh, it's the fault of the pilot or fault of the engine. We try to find out the root cause of it. Is there a system failure or a human involvement? So, so what do you think is the root cause? That's what we're trying to say. Yeah, we need yeah. to we need but to all work together, root cause. And in fact, proper academic studies have been done to identify the root causes, but yeah. people are not listening to it. They're taking a totally different narrative, a political narrative that somehow, you know, is in line with a particular allies. Yeah. yeah? That's the problem. If you don't want the truth and you go for your ideological, political motives, material motives, then you're not going to solve the problem. The problem is not going to go away. It's very hard. It's hard to understand. And a lot of people just want to live their life and yeah. do it and have a simple life. So they, they just believe what they're told in their Yeah, but you're talking about people who are in power, in government. Yeah, yeah. In government. How many false flags have we seen the governments are involved yeah. in? Okay. How many? If the governments themselves are part of the problem, yeah. many, right. then how do you expect people to have any trust in their governments? Yeah? There has to be this accountability. So that's why if you think about now Islam, that we want to say, look, if you think about Islam, leadership is such, such grievous duty yeah. that it's not something that one should want. But it should be given to people or person who is well deserving and capable of. Yeah. So, if somebody says, "I want to be the leader of the government," then you know, okay, he's in some kind of he's got some kind of greed, uh, greed that he has or she, yeah. or whatever that might be. If you go back and look at Islamic civilization history, yeah. when we had leaders of the Muslim lands. They went in disguise at night time and they went to see how the people, common people were living, what were their complaints. 
What were the complaints? What were the people saying and saying all these things? When Omar bin al-Khattab was going to take over Jerusalem, the keys to Jerusalem to be handed over to him because Muslims have conquered Jerusalem. Do you know how we went there? Did he went from this luxurious army of people and all this, you know, artillery and the military and so on? No, he had one companion with him who was the servant to undertake it and, and one mount whether it was a horse or a camel this is a vehicle of transport at that time one and do you know how they traveled they chose between themselves to ride the mount the animal in turns so the servant will go up and the leader of the world, Muslim world, at that time, we're talking about the early Islamic history. Yeah. 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 And he would be taking the rope of that animal and walking alongside with it. And while his servant is on the mount. When he reached Jerusalem, it happened to be the turn of his servant to be on the mount. Now, what would a normal, this is what you expect, leader of a country would do. He says, oh, get down now, you know, because now, you know, I need to present myself as the king, as the prime minister, as the, you know, the leader of, of the nation. You didn't do that. He says, no, it's your turn. You carry on. And they came to the delegation and the people who were about to hand over the keys, they were addressing the person on the mount. Oh, leader of the Muslims. And he was, you know, the person you want to speak to, that's right. him. Okay. That is what we call the understanding of justice system and where you don't somehow you know, present yourself like I am the king of the world and that's it. He could have easily done that. Yeah, but, so, but isn't that like you know, Boris who goes to the pub or to the schools and like, tries to mingle with the people now? Or when a leader does that now? Isn't that like, similar? Yeah. Now? But which, which leader do you see? They go in disguise to find out no, from the common people. But they can't do that. Anymore. Common people in the street and find out what the worries are. We know, even without doing them, how corrupt some of them are. Right? They're all power hungry, mature hungry, they're greedy. Um, but does the power not corrupt them? Maybe. So why did the power not corrupt our early Muslim leaders? I'm sure they corrupted no, 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 no. Eventually, at one point, when they became very greedy, and that's why Islamic civilization, in terms of its political entity, collapsed at one point. Because they were not involved with implementing justice in the lands. They were not involved in looking after the people. They were looking after themselves in their harems. You know, you, you heard, heard of the yeah, harems? Yeah, yeah. That's what they're doing, wine and women and, and all of that thing. They corrupted the people and people corrupted them. But in Islam, Islam says, no, you need to look after everyone. So we have a system in which you probably realize, even if you're rich, did you know that the poor people have a right over our wealth? They have a right over our wealth. If, even if we are rich, we have to give 2.5% of our surplus wealth to the needy. It belongs to them. They have the right. It belongs to them. We, have to, we are obligated to provide this amount of money. And the state will, of course, collect that and, and distribute it to the poor and the needy. So, yeah, if you think about it, it's, it's not just because we are rich, but that's it. we have to give this money to look after the poor people because they have a right on our work. Our Prophet وسلم, Prophet Muhammad, he said, you are not a believer. You are not a believer. You are not a believer when you go fully fed in your stomach while your neighbor is dying of starvation. He is linking that even that you don't have a believer. You're not even a believer. Like you don't even have this Islamic belief while your neighbor is dying of starvation and you're fully fed and you're not even looking after them. Yeah? So we have a responsibility even to our neighbors, doesn't matter who they are.
It's whether they're religious or otherwise, or no religion. Yeah, well, that's look, 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 we have to look after them. So, so coming back to these issues, yes, atrocities are happening and we are not looking at the bigger picture. Criminals are committing crimes and we are only saying, oh, you know, how did we let these criminals lose? The system is to be reviewed altogether. Why are criminals coming up early, so early from their punishment system? And then they're committing crimes again. What are they doing in the prison? Are they colluding with each other to commit you know, a bigger crime? Is that what he's doing? Because the punishment should be in such a way to deter the criminals from committing crime. To give you an example, if someone kills a person and the penalty was $20, do you think it's going to stop people from being murdered and killed? If that was the penalty, it's not. Why? Because the punishment is only twenty dollars. If somebody, if, if a bad person has twenty forty dollars in his pocket, he will say, "I can get away with two murders." Yeah. Is that going to stop them? No. Yeah. But if the penalty is very severe, yeah. that your life will be taken away. Yeah. In return, if you were found guilty, then that criminal will think twice. So our punishment system in many countries is actually something that needs to be reviewed again i mean yeah, it's not stopping the crime death penalty, you, you no, i'm saying punishment system needs to be severe punishment in islam it provides a framework for people to nurture themselves and grow and become good citizens of the country so you don't need to steal you don't need to do these things crime and if you do Having all that mechanisms in place, there will be severe punishment. So there are capital punishment, a handful of capital punishments, which are very severe. That's penalty. So that the people in the society can live in peace and without fear. Because if a punishment of highway robbery, so I know what highway robbery is. Someone in daylight comes along and kills everyone, does all these things, you know, bad things, raping and butchering and slaughtering, and then goes away and then police can't say anything. They're just there and they can't do anything. Do you think this is going to instill peace in the people, in the heart? We used to kill in the, in many years ago, but we, we progressed from that. I mean, like, yeah, but if you think about it, these crimes, if, if they take place without criminals being punished properly, the people in the society, they're not going to feel safe. You not feel safe to come out on the streets, outside from your homes. So in Islam, there are certain crimes, crimes against the society like this is very severe punishment to make sure the society thrives without any fear. So Islamic legal system is actually, if you think about it, is, is somehow intrinsically linked with the education system, the economic system, the social system, all the systems there work together. That is why, that is why you would expect that people don't need to fall victims of our being the criminal. There's no need. For example, why would someone need to steal when everything is provided? If everything is provided, why would you need to steal? Why would you need to steal bread? So when someone steals, when the provisions are there already, you don't need to, that means something's wrong with that particular individual. So this is this is just just briefly our take on you know how society today is failing to understand the root causes of the problems okay they need to really look at evidence based studies and outcomes from those studies and implement those rather than just look at and adopt a system draconian systems from a totally people who are anti certain people and take laws from them and advice from them okay there are many societies like Henry Jackson society other right-wing society you know they are the ones feeding the narrative and saying you should do this when they themselves 
I'm not giving you the proper analysis, resources, the outcomes and the framework. In fact, they're feeding a particular system for their own good. Okay? So, this needs to be looked at by people of sound mind. Unfortunately, this is not happening. Um, yeah. So, let's leave to that. You know, you know, the innocent people that is killed by these terrorists, you know, our, our thoughts and our prayers are for them, you know, you know, that they have patience. And it should be a wake-up call that the extremist needs to be dealt with properly. Okay? And the grievance grievances needs to be looked at rather than saying okay you know people let people have grievances and let people commit crimes and then we'll look at it afterwards no look at the root causes yeah so very interesting so from an Islamist perspective because you have to go we don't believe Islam is a new religion Islam is the religion that God has always wanted people to follow Jesus Christ to us is a Muslim he came with Islam so if I leave you on that thought, why do we Muslims consider Jesus came with Islam? Yeah. And he was a Muslim, then you can connect and see what the religion of God indeed is for people. Yeah. Yeah. I went to the Blue Mosque in uh, Istanbul mm. and there's, there's their tomb waiting for Jesus now to go or something. I, I don't I know why people have to wait. Jesus will return like, during his time because he's just migrated from the oppression of well, the people at his time. Where is Muhammad buried? In Medina. Medina, okay, yes. I know, yeah, that's what I was reading. When I went to the Blue Mosque, there, there's a tomb next to Muhammad for Jesus or something. Or is that true? Or, not? or something like that. Yeah. We don't sort of actively wait there and no, do not nothing. He will come in his time and he'll fight the Antichrist. He's yeah. a sign of the hour. So basically, he'll live for a few years, 40 years or so, get married, have children and the world is going to come to an end very soon. So this is towards the end of time. This eschatological teaching is at the end of time. He is returning again. He will make sure when he returns that all the people who believed in him other than what he was, that he makes it clear to them. Okay? Yeah? Because he didn't come to tell people that I am God and worship me and take my mother also as God like some, some people used to take me, uh, you know, Take, yeah. you know, and they still pray today, I think. Hail Mary, Hail Mary, Hail Mary. You know, take her name in their prayers. He didn't come for any of that. He came to tell people to worship none but God. Yeah? And he was a messenger of God. So I will leave you with these thoughts. So read the Quran and make that link. Yeah, make that link. Why Islam was brought by Jesus Christ and why he's a, he's a Muslim to our understanding. And you can see the link. You know, um, is this, what is this? It's all on a channel or something? Oh, there seems to be many channels now. Oh, so people are recording this. Um, are they all different? Oh, uh, no, it looks like they're each of these channels. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to have a walk around, but sure. let's talk to you. It's Take very care. interesting. Yeah. Okay.